Welcome back to the Arise interview where we speak to the newsmakers as well as ordinary people doing extraordinary things around the world and featuring the voices at the heart of the stories. I'm Charles Anya Golu. Now to the stark tragedy of Afghanistan where after the triumph comes the turmoil along with rising threats of recriminations, arrests and punishment in the new Afghanistan with Taliban militants hunting door to door for so-called collaborators. They're said to have blacklists with the names of people who worked for the US, NATO or the Afghan government, their lives now marked and possibly defined by the fate of their country. President Biden has acknowledged that more lives could be lost. So not surprisingly, thousands of desperate people have continued to gather outside Kabul airports trying to escape what they fear will be a Taliban retribution mission. Well, my next guest, uh, Dr. Nur al Haq Nasimi, knows about that fear. In 1999, he fled Afghanistan with his wife and three children to escape the avenging wrath of the Taliban. The escape journey took several months across thousands of miles in the hands of a chain of smugglers before they finally arrived in the UK in a dark refrigerated container. We're trying to make a connection with uh, Dr. Nassimi, uh, but before that, let's uh, hear from uh, the American President, Joe Biden. I will tell them that we'll see what we can do. Look, we are working closely with the G7. I've spoken with most of the leaders of G7. I'll be doing a conference with them, I think Tuesday, I'm not certain. And uh, we'll have that discussion, but we are, we already have helped get out diplomats from other countries. We've already helped get out citizens from other countries, and we'll continue to do that. There's discussions going on among us and the military about extending. Our hope is we will not have to extend, but there are going to be discussions, I suspect, on how far along we are in the process. As this effort unfolds, I want to be clear about three things. One, planes taking off from Kabul are not flying directly to the United States. They're landing at U.S. military bases and transit centers around the world. Number two, at these sites where they're landing, we are conducting thorough scrutiny, security screening for everyone who is not a U.S. citizen or a lawful permanent residence. Anyone arriving in the United States will have undergone a background check. Number three, once screened and cleared, we will welcome these Afghans who helped us in the war effort over the last 20 years to their new home in the United States of America, because that's who we are. That's what America is. And I'm sure they don't control all of their forces. It's a ragtag force. And so we'll see. We'll see whether or not what they say turns out to be true. But the bottom line is this, folks. Look, at the end of the day, if we didn't leave Afghanistan now, when do we leave? Another 10 years? Another five years? Another year? I'm not about to send your son or your daughter to fight in Afghanistan. I don't see where that is in our overwhelming interest. And the talk about how our interests are going to be impacted, let me tell you, you're sitting in Beijing or you're sitting in Moscow. Are you happy we left? <laughs> they love nothing better for us to continue to be bogged down there totally occupied with what's going on. So the idea, this is, I think that history is going to record. This was the logical, rational, and right decision to make. So thank you all so very much. This is uh, something, uh, you can say it's a red line. Um, President Biden uh, announced uh, this agreement that until uh, 31st of August, they would withdraw all their military forces. Uh, so if they extend it, that means they are extending occupation. While uh, there is no need uh, for, for that, I think it will deteriorate the relation, that will uh, create mistrust bet between us. If they uh, are intent on continuing the occupation, so it will um, uh, provoke reaction. What would be your message to them? First, I assure you, it is not about their worry and not about their scare. scare. They're, this is about, uh, the, 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 they want their demand to resettle in Western countries. And uh, that is a kind of economic migration. 
because Afghanistan is a poor country and 70 percent of the people of Afghanistan are living under the line of poverty. So everyone wants to settle in Western countries to have a prosperous life. Uh, so th 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 that is, uh, it is not about scared. Of course, uh, the, for their justification to go there, they exaggerate, uh, scare, and terrified, and so and so. So we know the Afghans. This is our society. Uh, this is not uh, the fact they are scared. What would you say to the families of those who died trying to help Afghanistan? Uh, I first of all say they occupied our country. If we uh, occupy your country, what you will say to me? If we, uh, I killed your people in your country, what you will say? I think uh, our people suffered a lot, bloodshed, destruction, everything. But uh, we say the past is the past story a part of the our uh, part of our past history now we want to focus on future and that is of course a, a taliban spokesman there um, before him we heard from the u.s president joe biden speaking about his decision to withdraw troops from afghanistan a, a move which of course precipitated the taliban offensive and their takeover of the country. Uh, Mr. Biden was responding to renewed criticism that the U.S. had abandoned the people of Afghanistan, saying the U.S. was committed to getting those at risk from the Taliban out of the country. Meanwhile, the Taliban saying they'll have a new model for governing the country ready within the next few weeks. Uh, but reports of course uh, emerging from Afghanistan suggesting that they've already imposed restrictions that echo the strict conservative rule they imposed when they were in power in the 1990s and of course my next guest who is as we speak trying to join us now um, from London he's just come from a meeting with members of parliament um, knows a lot about this because of course he escaped from the Taliban in 1999 along with his family, his wife and his three children. Uh, he had taken a degree from the former Soviet Union, a master's and a PhD and uh, appeared to have liberal views, which the Taliban did not like. And of course, at the time, they were just emerging from a war with the former Soviet Union. So the fact that uh, Dr. Nur al-Haq Nasimi had been in uh, the, Soviet, the former Soviet Union made him rather suspect with, with the Taliban. And they came after him. And in the dead of night, he had to pack his family up and run away. And um, I mean, from one, you know, group to another being sort of transferred from here to there thousands of miles later he ended up um on the english channel in a refrigerator um or a refrigerated container and uh, finally made it to the shores of the uk where he was uh, granted asylum by the british government um so obviously, one of the things we want to talk to him about is the um, hearing the Taliban reassuring people that things will be different this time around, especially viewed against the backdrop of his experiences uh, with the Taliban the last, last time they were in power. Does he believe them? I mean, because people are getting punished daily on the streets from what we're hearing. And it seems like the leaders of the Taliban, which is probably even more frightening, it seems like the leaders of, of the Taliban don't have control over their foot soldiers who appear to be establishing their own rules and regulations on the streets of, of Kabul, which is, of course, one of the reasons why so many people um, want to leave the country. Now, to make the situation even more frightening, I mean, we're hearing now that the Taliban are saying that they will not accept an extension to the deadline of August the 31st, which is the agreement that they had with um, 
the Americans, that the American, American troops and NATO forces would be out of Afghanistan by the 31st of August. The, uh, the, there's talk of the British Prime Minister wanting to convince the American president to extend that deadline and the Taliban already saying earlier today that they will not um, accept such an extension because that would now make it the third deadline that the uh, the, the United States is extending. Um, I can see the picture of Dr. Nur al-Haq Nasimi, uh, who is, uh, I'm told, is ready to join us. Uh, what a remarkable story um, his life is. And uh, Dr. Nur al-Haq Nasimi joins me now on the line from London. Uh, Dr. Nasimi, thank you so much for joining us. I know you've had a very long day and we really appreciate your taking the time to talk to us uh, because I know you were in meetings with members of parliament um, in the UK. First of all, just give us your reaction to what's been going on in Afghanistan over the past few weeks. Um, are you as shocked as the rest of us about how the situation changed so quickly and so unexpectedly? It's not just me. I think everyone around the world shocked about the announcement made by Joe Biden, the U.S. administration. It's very sad to see the U.S. president telling the world, we are not there to build a nation. We are not there to bring a democracy. The Afghanistan people, they have to build their future by itself. How can we build a better future for a country that experienced 42 years of war? After the Russian invasion in 1979, almost it's 42 years that the people of Afghanistan suffering and we lost millions of lives. Millions of people left the country, millions of people displaced and millions disabled. Oh, I think that devastating. It is unbelievable. Yes, I, I, I think I, I think a lot of people can relate to what you're saying. Um, but ju just tell us about your own experience escaping from the Taliban in the 1990s when you were targeted and you were forced to flee the country. I understand it was quite an ordeal for you and your family. So that's why I started my interview with a great uh, anxiety and concerns and frustration. We left Afghanistan because of the Taliban. We left Afghanistan because we faced persecution because of our uh, liberal ideology. It wasn't allowed for my girls to start attending school or for my wife to participate in community life. And that's why we left Afghanistan. And that's why the, the United States, as well as the International Coalition in 2001, they went to Afghanistan to remove, remove the Taliban and liberate the people of Afghanistan. And suddenly make a decision to leave the country and give the confidence to the Taliban, where they, as a, as a result of the announcement made by Joe Biden, then the Taliban had the confidence to start attacking number of provinces, districts, and eventually they capture the capital of the country. But then on the other hand, thanks to the British people and the British society, where we had so many achievements in terms of women improvement, women rights improvement, human rights improvements, investment on, on, on civil society, civic education, women participation in politics, and having a number of elections for the past two years, whether those elections were transparent or not transparent, this is another question. But at least the people of Afghanistan had a chance to exercise their democratic rights to vote for their local member of parliament, as well as participating in the presidential election. But after 20 years, the achievements was made by the British people, as well as its coalition for the past 20 years, seems to me disappear. Those achievements disappeared completely, and we don't know what will be happening 
in the near future. And I, I feel that Afghanistan will become a safe haven for international terrorism in the near future. And I was here a number of terrorist groups already started moving from Syria, Iraq to Afghanistan to support the Taliban. But on the other hand, I can see the Chinese, the Russian, the Pakistani have already supporting the, the Taliban, which bring more devastation to the people of Afghanistan. And that's why we urge the British government, the British people to send their troops again to Afghanistan. We need them at least for some times for, 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 in the, in the, for the future, rather than leaving Afghanistan alone and then allowing uh, the Taliban to to lead the country with a very bad track record that they had in the past before 2001. Right. Um, well, I mean, obviously, they're going to have a G7 summit uh, tomorrow, um, Tuesday, and we're going to have to see what comes out of that G7 summit. But you have been campaigning since you left Afghanistan for refugee rights in Europe as well as in Afghanistan. And uh, I wonder if, if you are involved with all the evacuations currently taking place in, uh, in Afghanistan and in the process of resettling some of those refugees who are arriving in the UK. What, what sort of, uh, what's the experience been like, uh, if you could tell us about that? So the activities of the organization since the crisis started in Afghanistan is completely now changed. For example, before the crisis, we had a just normal life, normal activities, just to run language classes, women empowerment project, as well as helping people on uh, uh, mentoring and volunteering placement. But now, since the crisis started in Afghanistan, we become a very, very busy, very crowded. Hundreds of people, they are coming to the center, expressing their uh, uh, concerns about their family back home in Afghanistan. They don't know what will be happening with their mothers, fathers, sisters, and brothers. They want to help them as soon as possible to get out from the country. But then uh, on the other hand, 5,000 people already arrived in the UK in Manchester airport in Oxford, as an organization, we have to now start distributing food, shelter, medicine, as well as toys for those new arrived people. And then in the longer term, helping those new arrived people to improve their integration and access the mainstream services as we are, as we are doing for, for many, many years, for the past 22 years. So the office is very, very uh, uh, busy. Uh, we are also trying our best to support some of the people who have been working uh, in our centers. I mean, we, we commend you for what you're doing, what, supporting those people. Dr. Nur al Haq Nasimi was talking to me there on the line from London. That's it for this edition of The Arise Interview. Join us again tomorrow from me and the entire team here in Abuja and London. Bye-bye and thank you for watching.